Well, sometimes here in YouTube land, we do a video and then like we use something again and we're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that it could do this too. And what I'm talking about is the SETI Astro culling feature. Maybe it's been mentioned in another video. I'm not sure, but I've never figured it out until today. So I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. I'm going to play with some photons today. Looks like it's going to be a clear night. Things are kind of dissipating, and we've got a few things to the scope that we need to do. Need to work on my guide camera a little bit. I'm not sure if I got a shoddy 120 or if the new ZWO F5 at 30 millimeter is just a bad scope because even with the gain cranked all the way up, things are looking bad. So we're gonna throw a 50 millimeter on there and work on that. And then we'll play a little bit with our Nina sequence. So speaking of our Nina sequence, and speaking of SETI Astro Suite, I see that Frank put a video out about it. We're gonna load mine up here real quick so I can show you guys what I found out today. This is gonna be Super cool for you people that are using like multiple night filters, broadband filters, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go into the blink comparator. And I haven't, this is the first time actually about Sunday at like five o'clock, about an hour ago, I looked at like last week's data here, finally got it sorted out. And what we're going to look at is we're just going to look at the data that I shot on M51 and actually shot some data on 7023, the iris. And what we did is we went into the blink comparator and we hit select directory. That's where all of my files are from that night. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to do this to weed out all of your bad stuff. That's why we do this. And Frank's tool makes it super easy to do. It combines all of the powerful features of PixInsight with the image comparator and everything else and brings it all into one. And it does this amazing thing. Look at this. It's separated out everything by filters. Like I had no idea it even was this smart to do that. I mean, who, you know, Frank is obviously the genius. And the beautiful part about this now is I can go through each individual frame and see what's going on with all of my pictures. And you can see nothing but clouds. I set up a Nina, you know, we went back to Nina from the ASI air just because I feel like I was losing too much time with the ASI air. I'd like to make it another video about that. Uh, doing the autofocus stuff like every time. And even though I don't need to, because my focus, my critical focus zone is well within, you know, these, these filters are definitely parafocal. There is a little bit of an offset um, going between a couple of the filters. I think the green filter, one of them is really off compared to like even the HA. But if we look at um, all of this stuff here and then we click on the show metrics, you know, this is where it's great. You know, it's going to break it down and it's obviously the show metrics is not going to be as handy as possible. Um, you know, I know, oh, wait a minute. Look, you can do it. Look at this shit. So this is all okay. Let's look and see at my green. Oh, Frank, you're just too good to us, man. If you are not a channel member of Frank's, like you need to go over there and support him right now. You can also support me too by clicking the join button down below, but look at this. So now we can go through and look at every one of our filters, which these all should have pretty much the same type of attribute attributes to them because I have a Nina sequence set up where it shoots L R G B H A. And, um, like, I think I shoot five, five, like, you know, whatever. And then it dithers and then it does it all again. So like that way I'm always capturing in a perfect world equal data, but you can see that I'm shooting more HA and more luminance. So I'm getting all my ratios like all together, like all in the sequence. And we can see exactly how awesome everything is here. And I think it was either this one or the iris where 
Yeah, there's obviously HA in M51, duh. So don't have to worry about that. But you can go through here. Obviously, you can zoom in, take a look at all of your stuff, even though you don't need to because Frank has already done all this. But, you know, this is another cool tool, uh, thing that I want to show you real quick is that, you know, you just don't know what's out there until it's out there. You know, we, we assume shooting an LRGB that HA pretty much every is everywhere. And it is everywhere. If you look at like the Stellarium forecast, uh, you know, if you look at one of the Stellarium maps or whatever, and you use the thing that I've done uh, that shows you like the red view, so this is the iris nebula. So there's my blues, there's my greens. And you know, this is all pretty much data that we're just going to toss. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with these HAs right here. Like, you know, the, there's clouds that come in right here and you can obviously see that there is just a little bit of HA in there when things were completely, you know, whatever. But I almost feel like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then it would have switched one. So I almost feel like my filter wheel was stuck in between image, and, you know, was stuck or didn't rotate because I had this set up to shoot five HA frames and then do, and then you know, move on to the next filter. So, and then you can see these five actually did take. Now the same thing happened with my luminance. So my luminance, we did five and everything looks fine on the luminance, but you can see just clouds and all this data is just a damn mess. But, you know, sometimes using it, it's great that like, I would have never been able to easily identify these kind of issues and stuff like that if I wouldn't have had like this tool. So a lot of people probably don't do stuff like this. They might just go through and weed out satellite trails and this and that and everything else. But using tools like this is just indispensable. Like Frank, this is just, you, you should be like charging for this. Like, I know you're way better than that, man, but like, you know, this is a freaking, this is literally a service right here. And again, it's all busted out by filters. And just in case you don't know how to use this, uh, you know, let's say that like, I want to eliminate these down here. Sometimes grabbing onto these uh, freaking bars are kind of tough on, like, I think they work better from the top down versus the bottom up. I don't know if that's just like a me thing or a freaking, I don't know, but that I noticed that last time, but that's fine because, oh, there we go. So yeah, so you just got to zoom in a little bit. So you can see how, uh, how I adjust this stuff. Like if I just want the high star count stuff, it's red dot and everything. It's eliminating everything here. And if we want nice round stars, which we obviously had just, shit guiding that night it was just horrible you know well let's just get rid of that and you know now we've got you know pretty much one frame on that uh that luminance that actually would be still not even half decent like that's horrible eccentricity which eccentricity is you know how wide your star is compared to how long or how long it is compared to wide whatever the hell it's called so anyway the tool rules. We found something else that we can use it for. And it, hopefully we can start to capture some data. Luckily, I just put the telescope at the end of the night to go after the iris because M51 is kind of coming down really quickly and it's going to be behind my house. So I want to try to collect so as much data as I can on M51 to try to get another galaxy done. I really like doing that adding HA type of stuff and then switch over to the iris. And the reason why I want to do the iris is because it's nice and zoomed in now with the RC6 with the RC6 and we're doing LRGB so we can pull out, you know, cool color. I want to see how different it is compared to some of my one shot color stuff that we've done in the past. So a lot of different stuff in this video. I don't know what I'm going to call it, but 
we'll figure something out. So we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.